Hey everyone, I'm just going to give an update tonight on the oyster reef tank. I haven't done one in a while. Um, everything's going pretty good. Um, I'll do an update on the river tank, which is over here uh, tomorrow night. That's the 75 gallon Potomac River Biotope Aquarium. And this is the Chesapeake Bay Oyster Reef Biotope Aquarium. Um, all the fish are up in front, all anxious. They know I'm about to feed them. So I'm not going to film feeding them. Even the crabs are out. Look at this. This big old mud crab, he knows the food's coming. Um, I already used a dose of the, uh, a couple doses of the automatic feeder um, and fed them some fiber bites. I just, I have that going once a day and I pushed it two more times. I do that every couple days just to give them a little extra boost of food since they only eat once a day. Um, but I'll give a little more in-depth update in a little while. Hey everyone, um, I'm focusing in on a mud crab. See the striped blenny that just popped his head out? Uh, the mud crab is right behind him. We're going to have some fun with him. He just cleaned out his hole and he seems to get irritated if I put anything near him. So he, when I first put the uh, fossils, the big fossils in, the whale ear bones, I put one in front of his area and he pushed that away. It's easily five times his size. So you can see him out there. He's, he's all happy in his hole. I'm going to clean some of that out, get that chunk of algae out of there. He didn't like that either. And I'm going to take that mussel shell and we're going to put it in his hole and watch what he does. And we're going to take this mussel shell right here. You can see he's in there. And we're going to put that right in there, in his way. Now watch what happens. He's not going to like that. And see how long it takes him to push that thing out. He worked on that last night quite a bit. Very uh, exciting. He does it all the time. So I want to show it on film. Yep, you can see. See, he's already trying to push that thing out. He's not afraid of me whatsoever. When I was cleaning the glass on the tank, he was coming out to check me out. He didn't pinch me or anything, but he came up and used his uh, side legs, his, I guess the, his middle legs to touch me to see what I was. I think they can sense food and stuff like that with the um, little hairs on their legs. So he did move that shell out a little bit, see if he comes out and finishes the job. You can see the spot, uh, they're the Norfolk spot, sometimes people call them, but that's the fish that uh, you see in the front, the right foreground, going to, through the, into the cavern. There's, they like to uh, get mouthfuls of sand and filter out the food that goes on the bottom. So they're great bottom feeders for fish tanks like this. They, they grow about six inches or so maximum size. These guys are about three and a half, four inches long. And they're, um, but they're almost like a Chesapeake Bay version of a sand sifting goby, which is really cool. All right, and the crab's coming out. Let's see if he moves that shell again. Yeah, he's starting to push it out. He, he feels it, he doesn't like it. He looks very menacing with those big claws, but he is harmless. He has not hurt any fish whatsoever. Um, he'll wave his claws and try to scare fish, but he doesn't actually pinch them or anything. There's uh, two species of mud crab. That's the black fingered mud crab right there. Um, there's also a uh, uh, Harris mud crab. There's many of them in this tank. I, they just don't come out very often. And actually, there's another. There's a species of hermit crab that lives in this tank that I've shown you before. Um,
There comes the striped blenny. That's the male striped blenny that just went by. One of the males in here. I've got five striped blennies. I've got three females and one male. Oh, there's his arch rival, another male. And he swam away without a confrontation. They're all looking for food right now. I just fed them a little while ago. And so everybody is uh, foraging for food. Um, the mummachogs are masters at it. I mean, they're a pain because they're so aggressive to get to the food that you have to, I have to use the turkey baster to get food to the, all the benthic fish. Um, the, the blennies are pretty aggressive. The skillet fish come up to the top and stick to the glass, but I have to actually make sure that they get some food, so I squirt some to, almost in their mouth and try to feed them a little bit every day. Otherwise, there's a risk they might starve. Same thing with the gobies. I try to, they stay on the bottom and I try to squirt some food to them. Um, I'm, all the mama chogs and the sheep's head minnows and the spot, they get plenty of food. They, they pretty much browse all day. So food gets caught up in the macroalgae and I mean, every little bit gets eaten within 10 minutes, I'd say. Um, no matter how much food you put in here, they'll eat it. All right, here comes Mr. Crab. He's a little not happy with a mama chog that's looking for food around him. He tries to scare him off and they, they swim away a little bit, but they're not really afraid of him. Yeah, that mussel shell is still sitting there. He's moved it out a little bit, but... Last time I did this, he pushed it all the way out to the middle of the tank. It was pretty funny. In the sump, which is the basically the filter, it's on the other side of my wall in the basement. Water's pump it, it drains into it and it's pumped back to the tank. In, in one side of it is um, a section called a refugium, which is a, an area where critters can grow in the system and not have to worry about getting eaten by fish. Well, almost all the grass shrimp that I had in this tank um, went through the overflow into the, <laughs> into the sump. So, um, and even a baby fish, a mama jog, found its way in there. So. Almost all the shrimp in this tank were either eaten or went into the sump. I probably put a hundred of them in here and there's probably 30 or 40 in the sump alive today. That was six months ago. Um, and the and all the baby fish I'm sure were eaten by the mama chogs or blennies or, or whatever when they were tiny fry. But you know, the ones that do hatch, if they can make it into the sump, they'll survive. One did. I just one day looked down and said, hey, there's a baby fish in there. I think I even made a video of it earlier, so you can search through my videos and get back to that if you want to see it. All right, well, I don't think he has his mind on moving the mussel shell out of the way. There's Mr. Hermit Crab. All right, he's going back to his burrow. And that's his bro. If you go through the other side, he's cleaned everything out. You can see he's pushed all the stuff out on this side. The razor clam shell was down in there. He pushed that out. The shark's tooth. So he cleans it out pretty good. He keeps it clean. If I put stuff in there, he pushes it out.
Ooh, there's a nice scuffle going on. A couple males fighting for striped bunnies fighting over territory. These battles go on all day long. One seems like it has the advantage when it's near his shell, and the minute he goes over to the other one's territory, the other one has the advantage. And it's all over the, about the female that you just saw across the tank a minute ago, a, a, sec, a couple seconds ago. There's a, three females in here. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Hold on, I'm hanging on because if you notice in the upper left hand corner there's a, a male bunny with his head poking out of a shell. There's a female right in front. Let's see if they... Yeah, nothing happened. <laughs> Whenever I'm filming, that's the way it goes. But that's where he'll, in that shell, he'll try to lure a female in there to lay eggs. So that might be the shell that winds up in my, in my larva tank when I set that up. I don't know. All right, I'm back. Uh, here's an update to my update. Uh, Oyster Reef Aquarium. Got some new additions and some fish are missing. I took out all the sheep's head minnows and put them in quarantine to try to treat that parasite. And uh, so they're not in here. They're getting hopefully cured. <clears throat> and all right, here's the hermit crab. Um, but I have some new additions in there, tunicates and sea squirts. So they'll, they'll live a while. Hopefully I can keep them for six months to a year. Um, collected them last weekend. Got a couple more blennies, but they're not in the tank. They're in quarantine. And I might donate those to the public aquarium, Glen Echo Park Aquarium. Um, but the sea squirts are really cool. So I found a whole bunch of them on this beer bottle, so I thought I'd throw that in there, give the fish another place to hide. And then uh, there's some solo ones in here as well. Um, there's a couple scattered around. There's some up here too, somewhere. Right there. There's one. And I put some in my sump as well. So I'm feeding them coral food. Hopefully they'll thrive on that. I have not tried this type of coral food with them. The last time I was able to collect them was four years ago. So, um, pretty cool though. Tunicates, also known as sea squirts. Let's come around and look at the other side. And the Chesapeake Bay biotope is now complete with a beer bottle. Macroalgaes are growing like crazy. Still, I have to do some pruning this weekend. Do a water change also. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.